all right well the jeep just broke down it uh randomly started overheating and i thought it was a bad sensor because the coolant lines or tubes didn't seem very hot but um sensor was definitely right so it ended up overheating this completely filled up and just poured poured coolant all over everything so I'm only about two miles away from the house so we're gonna wait for uh, AAA to come pick it up and tow it back to the house I think it's probably got a bad water pump in it so we'll work on getting it back to the house so we can start working on it the jeep back to the house i got the intake off of it i'm um, thinking it's the water pump down here that's bad um, i've already replaced the thermostat and the temperature sensor um, so i don't think it's those two i think it's just a bad water pump so i think we're going to try and drain the coolant out first um, try and make as least of a mess as possible um, and then we'll start taking stuff apart to get down to the water pump came out. you can see that but I just popped the uh, there's a little um, shock right here that holds tension on the timing belt or the serpentine belt so I'm going to uh, take a quick picture so I don't forget how to put it back on all right so there's four bolts in total to get this off there's a 13 millimeter down here at the bottom there's a 15 here a 15 on the other side and a 16 down in the middle once you get all those out um, the off handle will come out Pull the serpentine belt out of here. There we go. All right, now we're going to take these two um, fiber pulleys out of here. All right, now we're going to take these two uh, coolant lines off here, and we're probably going to get a bunch of coolant that's going to come out. All right, this is going to go after. Oh, shit. So looking at the new one, looks like there is nine bolts on this one. Um, 
all the bolts are different lengths, so once I pull the bolts out of here, I'm going to put them in the same hole on the new uh, water pump. That way I don't mix anything up. All right, so this is the original water pump. Um, everything on here looks fine. I mean, the fins are all intact. It spins with the, the pulley. It's not grinding. I don't really see anything on there that would make me think that it would be bad. Um, we are still gonna replace it, but I ended up pulling the thermostat out, um, which sits right here, which I did replace. I put a new one on uh, under a year ago. So maybe, the thermostat's bad um, but again it's it's fairly new it's only been on there for a little under a year um, but I think since we're kind of at this point I'm definitely still gonna replace the water pump um, I think I'm gonna go pick up a, uh, a thermostat too they're like 25 bucks so they got one at the AutoZone right down the road so I think I'm gonna go pick that up and throw that in as well um, hopefully maybe that'll help fix it too All right, in the meantime, um, let's start cleaning off this surface. Actually, it looks really good. I'm just gonna spray some brake cleaner on a rag here and wipe everything down. All right, let's start throwing this new one in there. We got the gasket on the back of it. I got all the bolts in place. Um, so we'll just kind of lower it down in there and we'll start tightening up those bolts. Alright, so these do have a torque spec. They're supposed to be uh, eight foot pounds. There is a torque sequence. You basically just kind of jump back and forth from left to right. So let's get that in there real quick and we'll start torquing it down. Alright, that's a pretty good uh, example there of why you should disconnect the negative from the battery before you start working on this. But the uh, torque wrench was touching the, the bolt and then hit the positive from the alternator. So, or from, that, from the battery that goes to the alternator. So, hurt, but at least I got everything torqued in. Um, let's start putting all the hoses back on so that way we can uh, fully lock in the water pump. All right, cool, we got the hoses back on. Um, next step is gonna be to get the uh, serpentine belt back in there uh, so we can get ready to put the alternator back on. All right, that's pretty much the gist of it. And then this little uh, loop right here that's sticking up, uh, that's where the uh, alternator will slide back through. So let's get that and we'll start putting that in place. We're going to need slack in the line. So I'm going to take that off of the power steering pump over here. Or, yeah, off the power steering pump. And that way we have some extra line up top here to put around uh, the alternator. And then we'll have to use the uh, breaker bar to pull this paw tensioner down so that we can get some slack on it again. Let's get these out of the way so I don't electrocute myself again. That didn't really work. Perfect. First thing I'm gonna do is put this wire back on so that way it's not flopping around and I don't have to worry about getting shocked again. Um, and then now that it's in place, we'll just go and start snugging everything down.
so we finally got the alternator all back in place. Um, the belt's ran as best as we can get it for now. We're going to pull down on this tensioner again and slip the uh, last little bit of the pulley um, over top of the power steering pump. It's really hard to get two hands in there because of the air box. Alright, so we actually don't have a uh, thermostat near my house. I thought the uh, thought the store down the street had one. It's online said they did, but we called and they don't have it. So we're gonna throw the original one back on there. Um, try it out. It's it's pretty easy to get to. Um, so worst case, if we do need to go back and replace it, um, we can easily pop that back out. Alright, now that we've got that all put back together, we're going to uh, mix together some of this. So you put in 50% of this and 50% water. So we'll put this whole jug in here. And then I'll go fill up uh, this whole jug with water and mix it in. Sweet. We'll get a uh, funnel now and we'll fill it back up. Oh yeah. I'm sure we're not going to spill anything. We're just going to have to take it slow. Let's try a different funnel. It's not taking any more, but there, there's no way it's full. I'm trying to squeeze the air hose or the coolant lines to try and get a uh, get some air bubbles out. We're gonna spill so much coolant out again. I'm going to turn the car on and um, let this start pulling some of the fluid through. All right, well, as you saw, um, new water pump did not fix the problem. Um, started it up, let it idle, gave it a little bit of gas, and it immediately went up to like 250, 260 degrees. So guessing it's the thermostat, um, I'm gonna have to go find one. We don't have anybody uh, near us right now that has it. There is one uh, like 30 or 40 minutes away. So I'm gonna go get one of those, um, and then we'll be back, and I guess we'll swap the thermostat out next. All right, it's so a couple of days later. Uh, we got the new thermostat in. Uh, so we're going to pull the old one out here, get the new one thrown in, and hopefully see if that fixes uh, the overheating issue. So it's nighttime out, um, so probably not the best uh, quality of video here. So I'm going to just pop this out real quick and then we'll test it out. All 
right, we got the new water or the new uh, thermostat back in the car here. Um, here is the old one again. So got that all replaced. Um, let's fire the car up, uh, let it warm up, and see what happens. All right, so we're sitting right at about 2.15 right now, sitting right in the middle. That uh, check engine light's on because I don't have the mass airflow sensor hooked up because I have the intake portion taken off, so that's why that popped on. Um, but everything seems to be doing all right. I'm gonna let it sit here and give it a little more throttle. That way we can see if we can get it to uh, pop open that thermostat still. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but we're up to 226 right now. Still sitting in the middle. Let's see if that goes back down though. All right, so we're back down around 220. So it definitely is cooling back down. Again, we're not, we're not moving, we're in the driveway just giving a throttle. So it's expected that it's gonna go up. Um, but in the past though, it hasn't dropped down from sitting here. So I think for now, we're gonna call it good. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'll just drive it around town for the next couple of trips um, and just keep a close eye on it and see if we're still having that same issue. But I definitely can tell that the thermostat has opened up um, because let me actually turn that off. So I could tell the thermostat is opening because this top line um, is actually warm now. So I could tell that it has opened up and it is passing fluid through it. It also is very pressurized right now so that wasn't happening in the beginning all right well for now i think we're going to consider that fixed again we're just going to keep a close eye on it for the next couple days um see what happens but it's been sitting here idling for quite a while sitting right at the middle mark where it should be um so we'll keep a close eye on it and we'll go from there um we'll, i am going to have a video coming out on the truck pretty soon as well uh so obviously we replaced the uh fuel sending module for that we're still getting an occasional misfire out of cylinder six. Uh, so we are going to go the route of replacing the fuel injector for that. Um, so we'll have a video out on that pretty soon. And then of course we still have a ton of, ton of work left to do on the boat. Uh, so we'll have some more videos coming out on that soon, but uh, stay tuned. Let me know down in the comments if you think there's anything else I should check on this. Um, I figured it was the water pump, but that was clearly not the case, um, but at least it's uh, running and staying cool for now. So. Keep a close eye on it. We'll see what happens from there. Uh, but stay tuned for another video and thank you for watching. Well, the Jeep was fixed, but I guess I didn't align the serpentine belt correctly um, because the belt just kind of blew out on me. It's still, it's still fully intact, but there's uh, pieces of it that are starting to rip out and they're kind of flapping around while it drives. Let me, uh, let me show you real quick. So I guess we're gonna park it here for the night. It's like five in the morning. I work overnight, so we're gonna have to leave it here until uh, later on today. I'll go home, get some sleep, and then go pick up a new belt uh, so we can hopefully swap it right here in the parking lot. You can see right there, it's uh, completely shredded apart. I'm trying to get the camera to focus in on it. Right here you can see the whole middle of the belt's missing, so definitely gonna need a new one. Luckily it's 5 a.m. and Chelsea hasn't gone to work yet, so at least we still have one reliable vehicle. Truck keeps breaking, now the Jeep keeps breaking, so not having the best of luck with cars right now, but hopefully uh, it should be a pretty quick fix. Let's go grab a new belt. All right, got the new belt. Let's go uh, throw that on. 
All right, start working on it. Pretty uh, obvious where the problem lies. All right, so I think I know. I think I know what happened when I was putting the alternator back on. This um, middle bolt was stuck on the belt, and I think when I started tightening it down originally, I kind of pinched it, and that kind of lines up with where it where it ripped at. <laughs> so. The belt was pinched behind the alternator and I think I tightened it down. I was trying to tighten it down like this, which makes perfect sense as to why it would have blown through. I didn't see any damage on the belt at the time of, but maybe uh, maybe there was, I just missed it. But the belt's not very brittle. It's not dry rotted or cracked or anything. It's literally just that one rip. I'm still gonna check, uh, spin each one of the pulleys. Make sure nothing's seized up or locked up that uh, could have also caused any damage. And then on the uh, the groove side, any of the pulleys that have grooves on it, um, just make sure there's no like debris or anything or like dirt or rocks stuck in there that would you know cause any issues. But everything looks pretty good. Yeah, all the pulleys are spinning fine. There's no uh, no noise or anything, so should be good. But let's um let's get this around the alternator first since that was the uh the issue last time. Alright, I think that's on the right this time. Just gotta make sure it's not getting pinched behind the bracket. cool so we got it around every grooved pulley um, the last one I got to get it on is that uh, it's around the power steering pump but I got to move the um, what the hell is it uh, the like tensioner one tensioner pulley so let me do that real quick let me actually bolt the alternator on first hand thread these bolts on Any, anytime you do anything hand thread the bolts on first make sure they're grabbing so you don't strip anything or cross thread it all right all those are started now we'll start cranking them in all right it uh looks to be good and again it also looked good last time that should be uh it should be fine. All right, before we throw the uh, air intake hose back on, uh, I'm gonna start it up real quick just to make sure everything looks good. I just got the uh, check engine light to go off after not having the mass airflow sensor plugged in from the last time, but that's gonna pop back on. But shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be an issue. Should go back off in time, over time. is a 
we're at. We'll uh, take one of the cars back to the house. And then since Chelsea's at work, um, probably just catch an Uber back here to come pick up the, uh, the second one. All right, well, no Ubers in the area. The only one that was was like 30 bucks for a 10 minute ride. So busted out the bike, take a nice little cruise over. Tell you what, that uh, $30 Uber ain't sounding half bad now. We're almost there. Let's, uh, let's never do that again. Oh yeah, there's no way that'll fall out. That'll work. made it back to the house um, Jeep is hopefully actually fixed this time um, so what do we learn in this video don't pinch the serpentine belt when you're putting that on um, or else that'll break um, second thing 26 year olds that are out of shape have no business riding their girlfriend's beach cruiser uh, two miles down the street especially when they're out of shape so don't take your car for granted um, but Jeep is fixed for now or like I said, we just hit about 100,000 miles, so I'm sure more stuff's gonna start breaking pretty soon. Um, but I think this is actually gonna wrap up this video. Um, hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Uh, if you haven't done so already, like, share, and subscribe to the videos. It'll definitely help gain some more traction on what we're doing here. Um, and then stay tuned for some more boat videos. Uh, I'm working on getting all the interior panels and stuff all finished up right now. Um, probably gonna have a video out for this in the next couple of days. And then we're gonna start working on getting everything thrown back in. Interior is pretty gutted right now, which is great. We got all the wiring and stuff done. So looking forward to getting some more done there. So stay tuned for the next video and hope you guys are enjoying. Thanks for watching.